AMD has come out of the gate swinging, claiming their new Ryzen 9950X is the fastest gaming CPU on the market, or at least it will be when it launches in July. This Zen 5 based chip, along with the three other Ryzen 9000 series chips they announced at Computex this year, will form the lineup that will challenge Intel's Arrow Lake desktop chips when those launch later this year. If you want to know all about Arrow Lake, by the way, I did a full deep dive video that I'll link in the cards for you if you want to check it out. But this video is all about AMD, and boy, there's a lot to get through, so strap in. Starting with the chips themselves, the 9950X is still a 16 core, 32 thread monster, although interestingly, it has a slightly lower base clock speed at 4.3 gigahertz, down from 4.5 gigahertz on the 7950X. Although it does sport the same 5.7 gigahertz boost clock and the same cache and TP values. They're also announcing the 9900X, a familiar 12 core, 24 thread chip, again with a lower base clock at 4.4 GHz, down from 4.7, but the same 5.6 GHz boost clock. The 9700X is the 8 core parts with a much lower 3.8 GHz base clock, but a slightly higher boost clock at 5.5 GHz, up 100 MHz from last gen. And finally, the 9600X is the 6 core, which has the biggest base clock drop from 4.7 all the way down to 3.9, although again, a 100 MHz higher boost clock at 5.4 GHz. The speculation for those lower base clocks, by the way, is all to do with AVX 512 workloads, so I wouldn't be all that worried. Now, those chips are all based on AMD's new Zen 5 architecture. And while AMD didn't go into too much depth on what's new with Zen 5, we do have some idea of what's different. We still have functionally the same design and layout, up to two core complex dies on a given desktop chip with up to eight cores per die, meaning 16 cores and 32 threads in total. They have um, apparently improved the memory controller, so now 5600 mega transfer per second RAM will be the new standard, matching Intel actually. And part of that might be thanks to AMD using TSMC's N4 node for the core complexes. Architecture-wise, AMD says that they've improved branch prediction, widened the instruction pipelines for higher throughputs, and increased the window size depth for more parallelism. What that means is that the front end uh, instruction bandwidth is doubled, the cache bandwidth, specifically from L1 to L2, or L2 to L1, and from L1 to the floating point units, is doubled, and the AVX512 throughput is doubled too. Rather impressively, AMD is claiming a 16% IPC uplift here compared to Zen 4, and actually what surprised me the, the most here is that unlike Intel, AMD is including some games in that figure. As they say, League of Legends sees a 21% uplift on the new cores, and even Far Cry 6 sees 10% more performance. Plus, in more compute workloads like Blender, there's apparently 23% more performance on hand, and that's pretty cool to see. Of course, the real elephant in the room is a lack of the 3D vCache CPUs listed here. Well, that isn't exactly a surprise. I'd imagine that AMD is waiting to see what Intel has to offer with Arrow Lake before dropping the X3D variants to quash any lead Intel may gain. Of course, with these new chips comes new motherboards. X870 and 870E boards will be hitting shelves at the same time as these chips, Although frankly, there isn't much uh, new like the, the, the CPUs really that's changed much. Uh, I mean, it's the a same actual chipset dies, although USB 4 is now mandatory as is Wi-Fi 7, if the board has Wi-Fi anyway. Uh, everything else is very similar with the same expected PCIe layouts, obviously things like VRMs, and for the most part, IO as well. Since these are still AM5 boards, I would expect the older AM5 chips to work just fine in these, and older X670 and X670E boards should, after BIOS updates, support the new chips too. Although we're technically yet to see that 100% confirmed, but well, that should work just fine. 
Naturally, there is some B-series chipsets that will be coming along soon enough too, although not quite at launch. One rather nice note to add here is that AMD is now planning to support the AM5 platform until at least 2027, and possibly beyond that. Meaning if you buy a CPU and motherboard today, so long as you keep getting BIOS updates, you should be able to keep upgrading CPUs for another three to four years and therefore three to four generations without too much trouble. That's fantastic to see, especially considering Team Blue has a bit of an annoying habit of killing platforms just to force you to buy the newer one. And now we get to the point where we all collectively cringe. AI. There's actually a lot new here though, including a new set of laptop CPUs, a new workstation uh, GPU, a new Epic, or actually a new set of Epic server CPUs, and new data center GPUs. So hold your nose, because we're going to dive straight in, starting with the Ryzen AI9 HX370. This is part of AMD's new codename Strix CPUs, a name I didn't think I would see as an AMD internal name, given Asus kind of claimed it like a decade ago. Anyway, they're announcing two new laptop chips here. The Ryzen AI9 HX370, a 12 core, 24 thread part with 36 megabytes of cache. That's around half of what the desktop 12 core has, kind of weirdly. Also Radeon 890M graphics, that's a 16 CU RDNA 3.5 core and a 5.1 GHz boost clock. Plus also the Ryzen AI 360, a 10-core part with an even more confusing 34 megabytes of cache, just 2 megabytes less than the 12-core, as well as Radeon 880M graphics. Both of these chips feature a neural processing unit, or NPU though, and that's what AMD talked by far the most about. The NPU, much like Intel's NPU4 in Lunar and Arrow Lake, is made up of AI tiles, although AMD, actually kind of following how they do graphics cores compared to Nvidia, have gone with smaller tiles, but more of them. They have 32 tiles, which combine to offer 50 tops, that's trillion operations per second, which actually beats Intel's 48 tops, although AMD actually had something to say about that too. See, there are two main data types that generative AI tools use, 8-bit integers and 16-bit floating points. 8-bit integers are faster but less accurate. 16-bit floating point, inversely, is more accurate, you get a better result, but it's normally half as fast. AMD has opted to support block floating points, which means that you don't need to quantize the models, and you get int 8 levels of performance while retaining FP16 accuracy. Intel's top numbers are int 8, meaning AMD is not only claiming to have more operations per second, but more accurate operations too. On the GPU front, AMD also announced a new workstation card, the W7900 dual slot. It's $3,499, which is frankly a steal for 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 ECC VRAM. It comes with 192 AI accelerator cores built in, and 123 teraflops of FP16 work. Oh, and an impressive 295 watts of total board power. That's kind of insane, and AMD is specifically marketing this as a dual slot card, meaning you can stick four of them in a case and let them rip. On the software stack front, AMD's Rockham tool suite has improved a fair bit, with now over 700,000 models on Hugging Face supporting AMD and Rockham straight out of the box. OpenAI are supporting Rockham for their Triton tool, which is a pretty big deal, as is PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Jax supporting Rockham fully. In the data center world, AMD announced a new MI325X accelerator card with a staggering 288 gigabytes of HBM3E memory with an astounding 6 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That's twice the VRAM that NVIDIA offers on the H200, meaning you can load double the size models. One trillion parameter models are on the cards here, which is frankly insane. That's coming out in Q4 this year, although they teased what's coming in 2025, which is their cDNA4 architecture, 
which they claim is an insane 35 times faster in inference compared to the cDNA3 architecture that the MI325 and MI300 are based on. Yeah, that's kind of insane. And lastly, we get to some more interesting stuff, which is unfortunately still infected with AI, but AMD announced a new set of Epic server CPUs, codenamed Turin, which will feature up to 192 core chips, uh, which is made up of 12 core complex dies, so assuming 16 cores per die there. Uh, they'll use TSMC's N3 process node, which is the first for AMD, and is actually a drop-in replacement for their current Genoa and Bergamo uh, current generation chips. They are coming in the second half of 2024, and while I'll skip over most of the AI stuff that they talked about, I'll note that they compared it to two of Intel's 64-core Xeon 8592 Plus chips, uh, and comparing that to two of AMD's upcoming 128-core Turin chips, they offer not just double the tokens per second, thanks to the core count, but 4x tokens per second in generative AI workloads. That's pretty crazy. They also said that compared to Intel's Xeon 8180 based servers, that's a chip from 2017 for context, you can replace five dual socket servers with one AMD 9654 or 96 core dual socket server and not only save 80% of the rack space, but you drop the power consumption from 4.4 kilowatts to just 1.56 kilowatts. That's frankly insane, and it's even crazier that you'll be able to double that core count to 192 cores per chip, or nearly 400 CPU cores per server. Oh, and the last little tidbit of information I found interesting was that AMD claims they now control 33% of the data center market share. That's absolutely huge for AMD, and I'm sure with these new Turin chips and their GPU market going strong, well, you know, especially going hard on AI, I think we're gonna see that keep going up. So that's what's new with AMD. The new desktop CPUs, which actually I just realized they won't have AI accelerators on board. Well, Arrow Lake will. That's gonna be interesting. Anyway, those are due out really soon, so we'll see what they actually perform like in the real world. And I'm interested to see when AMD pulls out the X3D trap card too. Of course, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about AMD's new chips, the laptop CPUs, the Epic server CPUs, and the AI, AI stuff as well? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other videos, including the uh, the one that I mentioned at the start about Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake. I'll leave that on the end cards. And if you want to support the channel, you can be able to test your own stuff with my own hardware, the open source response time tool and open source latency testing tool. That's linked in the description, as well as a load of other stuff if you want to check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next video.